How far you imagine how much you will get. That could mean anything, and anything could be in this box. It's meant to be the JG Aurora A5 3D printer, but there could also be a pain in the ass packed in cardboard, styrofoam, and this amazingly soft green tinted plastic. It's just so soft. You get the usual things, a small spool of PLA, a spool holder which clamps onto the machine which itself comes in two halves. Pretty similar setup uh, in the box, on the smaller version there's no pliers or scraper or gloves. Uh, you do get a USB pen, cabling, uh, allen key and a spare nozzle, a bit of plastic to do your levelling and some nuts and bolts. <clears throat> Again, it's a maker base, very similar setup. Okay, that's a good improvement. The uh, terminal for the heated bed is actually underneath, so that isn't going to get caught. In fact, the cabling is all hidden. Hasn't been glued on that well. <laughs> See the letter B written on there, sort of marker pen. So the first thing to make a point of is the couplers look a lot better than the previous version. I think that's just a one-off. I think when it was put together it must have been yanked. But obviously these are not the sort of machines that you can send back. You would have to get the replacement parts and repair it yourself. And you'd have to really ask yourself whether that's something you want to do before you uh, make the decision to buy something like this. Got quite a bit of wobble. This still is by far the most rigid one of this style. So, considering it is made out of sheet metal, it still feels quite wobbly. It's got a uh, limit switch here, but there isn't one on this side. On the AnyCubic i3 Mega, you have one on both sides. So you can set the gantry parallel to the bed by adjusting some machine screws which are positioned here. There's some PLA that I bought some time ago and I didn't pay attention to what condition it was in. Look at that bit there, but that's going to cause me problems. I'm just preheating, I think it's preheating. I have to admit these machines are very quiet. I don't know if it's because they're using underpowered stepper motors or... <coughs> to whom it may concern, warm tips. Warm tips. <laughs> The product you purchased is a DIY kit machine based on responsible attitude for customers. We have done lots of tests before delivery. The joint of main body and base as well as nozzle has slight abrasion. Um, we stress this is normal phenomenon. It won't affect the printing accuracy and artistic appearance. Please excuse this trouble. Thanks very much. Thanks for the warm tip. I'm now running through the assisted bed levelling program. It's exactly the same as the JG Aurora A3S, after which I attempted my first print. I feel like it's missing something, that like there should be something to hold the wire up, because uh, at the moment it's just resting on the uh, hotbed. I 
I was having trouble with the print sticking to the bed so I tried cleaning it with methylated spirit and checked if the gantry was square on either side. I also ran the assisted bed leveling program several times but with no luck. Okay the problem I had was the uh, settings on the Cura JSON file had the hotbed turning off uh, during a PLA print so I had to actually put those numbers in uh, the initial layer hotbed temperature will be 55 celsius and as it prints it will drop down to 50 so there they're warming up now Looks good, isn't it great? I think what the problem is, is it's sort of lifting up as it's extruding. Okay, it still isn't printing well. I've just pulled this off here and it's literally printing all over itself. And I think the problem is it's hopping or lifting between layers a little bit too high. I eventually gave up and printed a nozzle upgrade on the A3S, which did improve things a little. Obviously, if you only have one printer, you are probably going to lose your nut trying to print a new fan nozzle on a bed that doesn't stick. However, in retrospect, even though the nozzle upgrade did help, part of the problem was more to do with software and how I'd set up the start code. Too much filament seemed to ooze out at first and curl up sticking to the nozzle itself. There's probably better nozzles out there too. I'll write the start code and end code in the description below. Okay, it's still not sticking. Anyway, I printed one cube which came out pretty well, but then I decided to print five calibration cubes distributed across the bed. Two at the furthest corners, one in the centre, and then two at the foremost corners. Okay, so I wanted to test the large bed by printing five test cubes roughly in the positions where the bed levelling or the assisted bed levelling occurs. Okay, I decided to let this carry on printing and I've noticed something a bit unusual about the x-axis which is along here and it feels like all the cubes have a kind of gradual sway to the left which is a bit unusual I think uh, well what I noticed when I first built this and the A3S is the motor for the x-axis is quite small and I suspect it's probably underpowered and uh, struggling to print for whatever reason moving this cable around here or the trunking uh, it could be any anything so this has been a partial success Obviously, I've been able to attach all the cubes across the five points of the large heat bed, but um, there's an additional problem where potentially the uh, x-axis motor is underpowered um, and is struggling to print possibly missing steps. I opened up the machine, which wasn't easy to do, and twizzled the driver potentiometer. I took voltage readings from each driver as I was doing this so I could set the correct voltage specified for the axes. It's kind of hard to film but what I'm doing is going over the stepper motors, sorry the stepper drivers and just checking the voltage. Uh, this is the extruder and that's about 4.8. This is the z-axis that's 8.2 okay I'm going to try print the cubes again so that was a vast improvement but it was also a rough have to do the cabling in the 3D printer was quite compact and it was quite challenging to open without pulling things apart that said, it's nice to have a large bed to print on, but it's a shame that while the printer looks to dog's bollocks, it also wobbles like one. If you want to see how this printer fits into my ever-changing list of top 3D printers that I have used, please check out the link in the description. Also keep an eye on my Instagram page as I'll be doing a heavily staged giveaway soon.
Thanks again for watching. How far you imagine how much you'll get. Thank you.